frog knits. For those of you who are new here, my name is Brooke. I'm the human behind Popsicle Frog um, and I got a new video today. So first off, I want to say thank you to everyone who has watched my first video that I posted last week, anyone who's commented, anyone who subscribed. I really was not expecting the response that I got, so I'm so grateful. Thank you. And if you've come back to this video, hi, I'm so happy that you decided to watch this new one. Um, so today's video is a little bit different. It's going to be kind of a project vlog, like from start to the finished object. Um, it is a little bit chaotic. I'm hoping in like a fun and quirky way. Um, but without further ado, let's get into the video. All right. So today is, let's see, it's Friday, July 22nd, and I am going to be starting my Ingrid sweater today. I'm super excited. Um, it's been a little bit of a journey getting to this start um, because I ordered yarn um, like a week ago from Knit Picks, and I was very excited about it, and then it came, and I swatched yesterday, and my swatch once i blocked it it just wasn't doing what i wanted it to do um and that's probably because it's 100 percent alpaca yarn um so i started doing a little bit of research which i probably should have done before i ordered the yarn um and realized that for all of the different sections of the ingrid sweater um baby alpacas or not it's not baby alpaca, it's just alpaca. Alpaca was not the best choice. <laughs> um, I found um, Norman of Nimble Needles, I found his um, blog post about alpaca yarn and working with it, and I kind of realized, well, this was not the right yarn for this project. So I went back to the drawing board and I was looking on Ravelry and looking through project pages and looking at my local yarn stores, what they have. And I found a yarn that I think is, I thought was gonna work. And so I then looked on Ravelry and saw that there is someone who has used that yarn for the Ingrid sweater. And that made me feel a little bit better about it. And so today I went to my local yarn store and I picked up some more yarn so I can start my Ingrid sweater. So the yarn that I have now, let me just grab it is by Barocco, I believe that's how you say it, and it is Ultra Alpaca. Let's see if it'll, no, come on, in front of my face. Let's see if it'll, there we go. Now it's focusing on it. Okay, it's Ultra Alpaca by Barocco. Barocco, I think it's Barocco. We're just gonna go with that. And so it is 50% alpaca and 50% Peruvian wool. And the alpaca is super fine alpaca. Um, this is in the color 6214, which I believe is called Steel Cut Oats. Um, and it's just a pretty oatmeal-y color. Um, and so I got six skeins of this. I'm really hoping that's enough because that is all that they had. Um, so if I have to order more, hopefully I'll be able to find some in the same dial up, but I'm not going to cross that bridge till I get there. So yarn. And so I, when I got home, I caked it up because I'm super impatient and I made my swatch. Um, it took me a while to make the swatch because I was watching the new Downton Abbey movie with my mom. Um, and so after the movie ended, I blocked the swatch. So it is still wet, but it is here. This is cute little guy. It's still wet, so the color is darker than it's actually going to be. But 
I got Gage, yay! So, now that I've gotten Gage, and I like how the fabric looks, it's not see-through like the alpaca was, that was like super, super holy. Um, and I'm a little bit annoyed with that yarn, and I knew that it was going, so it was the Knit Picks Simply Alpaca Erin. Okay, everything I read said that it was not Erin, it was going to be smaller, so I knew that. But when it got here, it was so much thinner than I could have imagined. I swear it's probably DK. Um, and I was like, okay, it'll be fine when it blocks out because alpaca grows, or at least I thought it did. Who knows if it actually does, not me. And so it didn't grow like I thought it was going to grow. And it's just, yeah, it didn't work. But I now have a sweater's quantity of very nice alpaca um, that I don't currently have a project with, project in mind, um, which is not like me. I normally only buy yarn when I have projects in mind. Um, but with all that said, um, I am wanting to start my Ingrid sweater. So I'm going to do that today. It's about 4.30. So I don't know how much I'll actually get done today, but knowing me, that's knitting is probably all I'm going to be doing for the rest of the day. Um, put on a little TV show, put on some knitting vlogs, and knit because it's Friday afternoon and I'm not doing anything else. So I'm going to get started with that and I'm going to take you along with me. So let's get into it. super hot water to like unkink the cables but I have never done that so they're kind of funky but they work so already time to start casting on my stitches I made my little slip knot and I use the log tail cast on um, I feel like pretty common one. Um, I just put one of my removable stitch markers after I do 10 and then I cast on another 10 and do the same thing. That's 50 stitches. And what I do when I hit 50 is I'll put a marker. I'll do one and then I will remove the markers. Ta-da, 50 stitches. And then I got a marker telling me so. I'm gonna keep casting on but it's super awkward to film at this angle, so I'm gonna do it off camera and then I'll be back. Okay, so it is now Saturday, July 23rd. So it's the day after I started my sweater and I just wanted to give you guys an update before I start working on it today. So everything I've done, I did last night after I cast on Let's, I left the most absurdly long yarn tail when I cast on and um, it's just kind of hanging out. But this is, this is what I've done so far. So, doesn't look like much, but this is gonna be, this is the back shoulders of the sweater. Um, so I've done, let's see, the, Moss, the double moss stitch. I did 
some of the eyelets that are in it and I'm about to start the next section which is the crisscross mock cables. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to get started on that and I don't have a ton of time to work today so we'll see how far I get. I would love to get to the end of the, the back yoke and get to where I can start the shoulders uh, tomorrow. Um, we'll just see what happens. I'm gonna go watch the new episode of Drag Race and knit. So I'll give you guys an update later. So it has been about an hour. I just finished my episode of Drag Race that I was watching and this is where I am at. So I've done about half of this section of the crisscrossy bits. Um, I'm gonna keep working. I think I'll probably finish the, the these cute little guys today um, and then go on to the next section. Yeah. All right, so it is now Wednesday. I believe it's the 27th. It is the 27th, I was correct. So it's Wednesday the 27th. Um, it's been a couple days since I've done an update because to be honest, I forgot. Um, so I figured I'd update now because I just finished my second cake of yarn. So I've used about 200 grams. Um, so I figured I'd show you guys where I'm at. Um, this is my puppy Ripley. Um, she's just gonna lay in the background until she decides she doesn't want to be there anymore. Um, okay, so let's see where I'm at. So I am in the middle of the row because that's how much yarn I have left. <laughs> um, but it is going by so quickly. I have done the entire yoke. I don't know if it's called a yoke in a drop shoulder construction, but I'm calling it a yoke. So I've done the back panel and the front panels. I've joined in the round and I have done the whole first section after joining. So I'm about to start the next section like this. Um, I'm doing the little eyelet rows right now. Um, my cable's a little bit short for the areas that aren't the ribbing, which like, it's ribbing so it shrinks up a ton. Um, but it's so much fun to knit. I feel like I'm probably the millionth person who has said that. Um, but it is a great time. Um, it's super engaging. But at the same time, it's not super difficult to remember the pattern. Like, I, f I feel like I've pretty much got the pattern down. And so as long as I know what section I'm in, I can figure out what I'm doing next. Um, yeah, so I'm about to start the next mock cable section, which should be fun. Um, I think that section probably takes me the longest, but I think it's, uh, I enjoy doing it, so it's, I don't really mind. Um, and I think it just, it looks so cool. Oops. Ah, yay, it's focusing. See, I should be able to, I should be able to do this. I'm a film major, so hopefully this is not super out of focus and stuff, because that would be embarrassing. Um, but I'm about to, let's see, I have my bag of yarn from my local yarn shop. This is the, come here, ultra alpaca. I gotta cake another one of these guys up and then I'm gonna join it. So let's go and do that.
So yesterday I did the neckline and I went to try it on and I can't even get it past my forehead. Like it's so small. The rib is stretchy, but this bit is not. So I need to unpick it for I'll get and redo it. Um, I believe this happened because I didn't pick up as many stitches as the pattern calls for um, because I was having trouble getting the right number of stitches and I had already, I was, I did it with 3.5 millimeter needles and it calls for three millimeter for the collar. Um, so I was like, it'll be fine that I picked up less stitches. I, I think I, I think there was like a 16 stitch difference in the amount. Um, so now I have to undo it and rip it all out. So let's do that. filming these like clips doing check-ins but alrighty I am so close to being done so close the body's done the neck is done the sleeve is done and then this sleeve I have a couple more rows of the double rib then the eyelets and then the single rib 
I lost my train of thought. Um, so this is as much yarn as I have left on this, but thankfully I have to find it. I have one more. One more! I'm not gonna have to play yarn chicken because I have less, I need less than 20 grams to finish because I know where I was on the first sleeve when I attached a new ball of yarn and I only used 20 grams of that ball on that sleeve and I'm about that spot. So my estimate is I'm gonna use 20 grams. Um, but now I'm gonna wind this and I'm really hoping to finish this tonight. I don't have that much more. It's currently, let's see, 810. I normally stop knitting about 930 when I come upstairs and like get out of my bed and then watch TV um, to give my hands a break, but I want to get this done, so we'll see. Um, I probably won't do another check-in tonight, but I will, if I finish it, I'll do a check-in first thing in the morning. Um, so let's see how this goes. Can I get it finished? And if I do get it finished, it will be less than two weeks that I've been working on this. So let's see what happens. Okay, so it is Friday, August, I'm not sure where my phone is, oh here, Friday, August 5th. So it has been two weeks since I started and I finished it today. I'm so excited. Yeah, so I'll show it. So I just finished weaving in all the ends. None of them are cut because I'm gonna wait till after it's blocked. And um, my goal was to finish it last night and I got all the knitting done last night, but I didn't do the tubular cast off on my second sleeve until this afternoon. Um, and I think I had said I would do a morning check-in, but I ended up going out with my mom this morning. So that didn't happen, but I am, I'm so excited, but I'm also really sad that I'm done knitting it because it was so much fun and it was really engaging and, but not like super difficult. Um, and I've been working on 3.5 millimeter needles and below for like months now. So it was really nice to do a four millimeter project. Um, definitely a nice change. And I'm about to block it. So I got some lovely blocking pens, which are downstairs, so I need to go get those. Um, but I've never had to like aggressively block something before, but as you can see, especially in the s double moss stitch or double seed stitch, it's it's like puckering really weirdly. And I think that has to do with the, the two by two rib needing to stretch out. Um, so I wanted to get actual blocking pens because I have been using my little like these little needles to do all of my blocking since I started knitting because I've never had to aggressively block something so I got some real real um blocking pens that have the little plasticky bit holding them together um I'm gonna run and get them and I'll be right back. So these are the blocking pens that I got. So they are Knitter's Pride, part of the Mindful Collection, which has this really pretty mandala logo. So off the lid and this is what they look like so there's a bunch of different colors but the big ones 
have eight little needles. And there's little, I don't know if this is gonna be able to see, but there's little slots and they have little things that kind of mark where the slots are and then you just stab them back into the styrofoam. And then there's also some little ones there that are just adorable. But that's what I'm gonna be using to block. And then my blocking mats, which are just from Joanne. Um, I have two sets of them, so I have eight. Um, let me grab one. They just look like this. Um, I got ones that have the grid just because I wanted to have it, but you could also use like kids play mats. Um, I don't know how expensive those are, but that's a good alternative, um, especially if you have them. So, um, sweaters in the water now, and I'm excited to see what it looks like all pinned up. All right, so I have just gotten it all pinned down. It grew about as much as I wanted it to. I think it's gonna be perfect. I cannot wait for it to dry. It's super humid here, so it's probably gonna take a while. I might put my fan on, like the little fan that's right there. I might turn it on it to see if it'll make it dry. Um, not that I can wear it anytime soon. It's like 100 degrees out every day. Um, it's, yeah, but I used all of the blocking pens. Like, I wish I kind of had some at the bottom, but I don't really care um, as much as I do about the other bits. So, we'll see how it goes, but it's blocking. and show things that I've knit. Um, so if I'm standing funky, excuse me. <laughs> okay, so just quickly to go through some of the modifications that I made, there's a couple. So the first and probably most noticeable is the collar. So I did a double folded two by two rib collar. So I did, um, I think I did 24 rows in total and so it's about 12 rows high. So that was the one of the bigger modifications that I did instead of doing the two by two and then one by one turtleneck. The second is I cropped the body 
and to do that I just stopped with the two by two ribs so normally there's a eyelet row and then a one by one rib section but I like to be able to tuck sweaters into my jeans and these are like my super high-waisted jeans so it works great it sits a little bit above my natural or a little bit below my natural waist so for me that is the perfect length and then I've also found with almost I think all the sweater patterns I've knitted I needed to lengthen the arms because I have pretty long arms because um, I am 5'8", almost, technically 5'7 and a half. Um, so I added more rows in the 2x2 two two rib on the sleeves. I think I added about 12 rows. Um, and I am so happy with this. It could not have turned out better. Um, the one down, the one issue I have that I've heard from like everyone that's knitted and everyone on Ravelry is the decreases in the cross section. So you can kind of see here, they look kind of funky. Um, and on this sleeve, they also look funky. So the pattern does not actually tell you how to do the decreases and still make the lattice look nice. So I just kind of winged it. Um, this was the first sleeve. Um, this one was the second sleeve. They look different. I'm not sure which one's better or which one's worse, but it's on the bottom of the arms. So nobody is gonna see it unless I point it out. So yeah, this is the finished sweater. It blocked out so nicely. It's oversized. I love the drop shoulder oversized. Look, this is the first sweater I've done that is drop shoulder and oversized. So I'm so happy with it. You know, I can't wait to wear it. It's so hot here, I have to get out of this, but I can't wait. So this is my finished sweater. Thank you guys so much for watching and following along in my little knitting journey. I hope you enjoyed. If you did and you want to see more from me, you can go ahead and subscribe. Um, also, if you like the video, you can like it leave a comment. I'd love to know what you've been working on. And thank you again for staying to the end. Okay, we're doing this again. So that is my finished sweater. I want to thank you all for watching, for making it to the end. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, you can give it a like. And if you want to stick around and see more, you can go ahead and subscribe, but no pressure. Um, I would love to know what you guys have been working on. So if you want to leave a comment in the description below, go ahead and do that. And I thank you again for watching and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.